Well, yes. Uh, well, today I'm going to be just doing something a little bit different. It's not quite as technical uh, as I normally get, either with the reactions videos or, um, or you know, my now Let's Play videos, which now I can uh, capture. But today it's a little movie review. And just so you know, this is a movie that not many people will actually know about. Um, this was a straight-to-video film uh, that was released in 1997, and it's called The Midas Touch. Now, this film for me is is very nostalgic. I'm probably one of the few people uh, who remembers it well. Uh, yes, originally released in the States in 1997, and uh, it happened to be on TV. It had been on TV a couple of times over Christmas, and we just happened to tape it one year, and I watched it repeatedly. And then eventually, since I, I still had the tape up to when I was about 19, I still watched it, but as soon as we couldn't really watch videos anymore because we didn't have any more working VCRs or video recorders uh, I looked for the DVD and I found the DVD and I got it imported from America on Amazon but luckily this is a multi-regional DVD so I don't have to, I can play it on you know on my all my region 2 consoles and players okay so I'm gonna go on to the plot of the film basically this is the story of a 12 year old boy named Billy Bright and um, he is living with his grandmother. His grandma's his, his his grandmother is his only living relative because his parents are deceased, and um, he um, is worried for her because she has a serious heart condition and is in need of a heart transplant, a quite urgent need of a heart transplant to ensure a longer life, and. Uh, the premise of the film goes over one weekend, and he goes so he goes to school on a Friday morning after his grandmother's told him that if he stays at school, because his desperate desire is to leave school and get a job so that he can support her, but she reminds him he's not old enough to, and he should stay in school, and he and she says one day he'll grow up and have everything, and he'll be just like King Midas. Then what happens is, so when he gets to school, he is confronted by um, a bully uh, called Leon. And it's actually, yes, Leon actually appears earlier in the film. He actually wakes Billy up by throw it, by standing in his uh, drive near his garage, throwing stones uh, through Billy's window, which happened to hit him on the head, wakes him up from a dream he's having. And Billy's dreaming about basically lit, having everything he wanted in life, having his nan, his grandmother being around, being a wealthy, rich kid, living in a big mansion with a butler. Yeah, he's woken up by Leon uh, just at the beginning of the film. This is the scene before the scene with his grandmother in the kitchen where she tells him that he will one day be like King Midas. And then what happens is... Um, so yeah, he goes to school and he's confronted by the bully Leon who pretends to help save him from some other bully bullies who nick his lunch money or rob his lunch money and uh, instead of giving it back to Billy Leon t tries to keep it goes decides to keep it um, and he's a you know much bigger broader kid um, so he uses that to his advantage over Billy and um, it turns out Leon's pissed off with Billy annoyed with Billy because uh, basically Leon makes Billy do his homework for him and basically threatens to beat the shit out of him if he won't and he's not happy because Billy hasn't been able to type up his homework assignment as it's handwritten. So obviously when they hand it in to the teacher, that he'll, he'll know, the teacher will know that uh, he hasn't done his homework by himself because two assignments will have the exact same handwrite, handwriting style on them. And anyways, yes, uh, yes, after this happens, the teacher, the teacher basically goes a bit easy on them, saying, you know... That, you know, um, as your punishment will be, you have to write an extra paper this weekend on what you do, and it's due the following Monday. What they do over, yeah, what they do over the weekend, and it's due the following Monday. So basically, yes, this pisses Leon right off, and uh, Bill, Billy gets off on his bike um, a week before um, Leon can catch up with him to start, you know, to start harassing him, and. Uh, 
there's this really funny scene where Billy, Billy's only friend, a girl called Hannah, uh, turns up and she notices that uh, Leon's planning to to uh, to ambush uh, Billy and start picking on him. So she actually kicks him and uh, throws his words back in his face when he when she she asks him, she asks Leon why he's always he's always picking on Billy. He says, "Well, someone has to toughen him up." Might as well be me. So she kicks him in the leg and goes, oh, someone's got to toughen you up. Might as well be me. And then Leon goes to this sort of graffiti area and he meets this other gang of, you know, gang of other teenagers and young kids. And um, because, you see, he's injured, and of course he won't admit that he's been he's been flunked by a girl. Uh, he says that he was jumped by a group of college dudes college dudes in football jackets and uh, then and and then to make himself look good he boasts that he's a uh, comes from a long line of war heroes in his family and then so what they do is the other kids basically challenge him to prove how brave he is that he'll go into this house that 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 legend says in the town uh, is lived in by a a old witch or a witch lady as they call her and um, that he will take the he'll steal the hourglass that's in the in the window that people can see from the outside, and take it back to them so he'll prove he's been in there. So of course, what this what happens then is this is an ideal opportunity for Leon to get back at Billy because then he can get Billy to do it to basically get so Leon will basically get his revenge, you know, over the over you know n Billy not typing his homework and getting him into trouble. So while Billy's on his after-school paper round, Le Leon ambushes him while Billy's on on his bike. And Leon, he actually is seemed like a real school kid bully, and the way that bullies were perceived in '90s shows and films, he is quite like because he grabs Billy's bike as he turns a corner, knocks him off it, and then gets on the bike so that Billy will follow him, and he takes him and they go to this this basically this old creepy house where the supposed witch lady lives. And yeah, he tells um, Billy. Yeah, and um, basically Leon tells Billy he's got to go in there. He's got to go in there and catch, get the hourglass. And um, Billy does try to stand up to him at first. He actually tries to physically fight him off, but Leon pounds him, knocks the wind out of him, and then Billy then goes in with Leon basically standing over him to make sure he'll complete the task. And so yes, Billy enters the house, and um, there's this magic cat that can actually take the form of a uh, statue of a cat. A yeah, but when the house is entered, the cat comes to life, and that's when Billy knows he's clearly not in a you know he's in a mysterious environment. And then as he walks into the living room, this mysterious old woman appears. And then, yes, this is the witch lady. I think her name is. Madame, they know her as Madame Latimer, is what they call her. And um, at first, yes, Billy, uh, Billy records, oh, he's in big trouble, he's entered a witch's house. And she reveals before he said anything that she knows he wants her hourglass. And um, she offers it to him, but then uh, he tries to run out, he tries to run out the house because he's frightened, because, yeah, the, the cat, the statue turns back into the real cat, jumps at him. So he tries to, he tries to r run out the house. But the strangest thing happens is that when he tries to open the door, the door handle moves away from his hand, moves to different places on the door, and and there's also one where the door handle just stretches, so he can't open the door as well. It's it's really funny, really good effects, you know, for a cheaper, you know, for quite a cheap straight video movie. It's, but it is, it was a really good one for its time. And. Um, Right, so then um, when Billy finally asks to be let home, um, the witch lady says that she he won't she won't let him leave till she's finished with him. And what then what then happens is, um, Billy first thinks that the witch lady is going to kill him, but then she says no, she's not going to kill him. She's going to help him um, because basically he's been brave enough to enter her house, and she can see that he's a good, kind-hearted kid who thinks of others. Uh, clearly, he's his sick grandmother. So she says she'll grant him a wish. 
And Billy, and then Billy remembers what his grandmother had said to him that morning, that one day he'd be like King Midas. So he wishes that he was King Midas, and before the wish is granted to him, he has to say that he, if he wishes to be King Midas, he has to accept the good and the bad that will come with it. So he does, and she grants him the wish, and... Uh, Basically, he's startled by the experience because uh, he has a magic spell cast on. So, they, so he then then the doors magically open to let him out, and he runs away, and he runs away from Leon before Leon can get to it, before Leon can get him. And um, then it cuts to the night where he's sleeping back at his house, and uh, he he wakes up and goes and strokes his pet hamster. And what we can see is, but he doesn't notice at first, is that the hamster actually turns to gold. And then he wakes up in the morning and notices there's something odd with his hamster, and then he realises that it wasn't just a dream, it happened because his hamster is actually gold, and uh, then um, when he starts picking up other things while he's getting dressed, he, other things start turning to gold, like a, a cap of his, which he hides under the bed so his grandmother won't find out. So, and then uh, he goes and asks his grand, he goes and asks his, asks his grandmother what would she want more than anything in the world, because supposedly now he can turn things into gold. Um, she says she wants a new heart, so Billy then says he'll go out and get the new heart, and she's about to try and grab him to check his hands, but so he doesn't accidentally turn her to gold, he quickly gets away, and um, then as he's walking into the town one day, Leon ambushes him, and he's clearly very angry, because he, you know, of course, he, of course, Billy not getting the hourglass, and Leon having to go back to the, his gang empty-handed made him look bad, so he starts to beat the crap out of Billy. And then Hannah comes to his rescue, crashes into Leon with his bike, um, and um, then um, when Billy tries to explain why he's not got the hourglass, he does say that the witch lady gave him something better, that she granted him a wish. So he picks up this can, um, and then touches it, and it turns to gold. And that's when Leon's opinion to Billy t completely changes. Suddenly, Billy he starts to say, oh, Billy's like his best buddy. Of course, clearly, Leon wants to take advantage of him to make him rich. Um, so, what happens is, Leon, Billy, and Hannah go up to uh, a treehouse, which is Leon's fort, and uh, Leon gets the idea that for Billy to turn things into gold, and that, that then they can pawn the golden items to make money for themselves. So, yeah, Billy touches a load of action figures and, um, yeah, various, like, items, like, watch, and a, and a watch and sort of stuff like that. And then Leon gets the idea to go to this, to this, uh, pawn shop that he knows. Of course he knows he isn't old enough, because you have to be 18 to pawn, but he's got a fake ID on him. And when they go to the pawn shop, that's when you meet the two villains, two crooks, who run the pawn shop, the, the main protagonist of the film. Uh, a brother and sister duo, um, two middle-aged people called um, Cora and Willie, and yeah, and so he, yeah, he manages to fool them with his fake ID. Uh, I think I think they they buy the items and he gets like two hundred dollars. So but clearly they were swindled because the amount of gold he takes in would be worth thousands. But he's happy with it. I think he keeps a hundred for himself and gives Hannah and Billy like the other. 50 bucks each, 50 dollars each, and of course, Cora and Willie, the crooks, they're, of course, they're suspicious about where, where the three kids, where the three teenage kids get all this gold from, and so he, they decide to follow, um, the three kids home, and, um, when, uh, when they, when Hannah and Billy basically split from Leon for the day, uh, after they've got their money, uh, Willie gets the idea that it's either one of those two that's got that actually has the gold. So Billy then goes home to find that there's an ambulance at his house, um, and yeah, that his uh, grandmother is being seen to by uh, medical by doctors, and that explains her heart condition's got worse and that she'll soon need a pacemaker. And there's then this really emotional scene um, where Billy tries to make his grandmother promise that she won't leave him so he won't be all alone. And she does promise. Um, and then he goes and gets her a glass of water, and then the, this is where the tables turn, is that for a moment Billy forgets about his, his power, and uh, he 
he touches his grandmother's finger and of course his grandmother then turns to gold and he comes back with a glass of water and he screams and faints when he sees what he's done which is now his grandmother's gold and then while this is happening it cuts to Leon going to uh, Miss Latimer, the witch lady's house uh, in hopes to get the same power for himself uh, of course when he enters and she appears but she can see that he's selfish and that he just wants the power for himself and he does try to say that he says that he wants to wish for to help someone but um, but yeah um, and she sticks his feet to the ground so that he can't move and she actually puts a spell on him to turn him into her servant temporarily so that he'll be reformed um, and then Hannah comes to Billy's house and finds him on the floor unconscious from when he fainted. And then she, when she wakes him up, she says, "Well, what have you done?" You know, she notices what's happened, and Billy explains it was an accident. So they have to think of a way to get his grandmother changed back. So what happens is they decide to go back to the witch lady's house. And when they get there, they're greeted by Leon when they go in. And uh, he's got a completely new image. Looks rather ridiculous. Uh, Looked like a, you know a, a weakling, uh, you know a weakling, nice guy sort of person. Now someone could tread all over, just like the sort of thing he's been doing to people. And um, they're very they're surprised. Of course, they're surprised to see him there. They don't know what's happened to him. And then the witch lady appears, and Billy then asks her to cancel the wish. And she says that she can't, it was his wish, and he did say he'd accept the good and the bad that comes with it. And, yeah, Billy at first refuses to leave, and um, she, he tells the witch lady what his grandmother told him, that one day he'd be like King Midas, things would be better for him, but it turns out they're not. So, uh, but then she does say to him, she can't cancel the wish, only he can. So, uh, yeah, Billy then goes after the witch lady, you, she gigantifies the, the magic cat, to frighten him off, and um, then yeah, Hannah, Billy, and Leon uh, ask, uh, think of a way to how how could they possibly cancel the wish on their own? Because uh, Billy knows he has to do it himself. So they get the idea to go to the library to look at the myth of King, you know the myth, the Greek myth story of King Midas, and they do. They sneak into the library because it's closed. They sneak in through an open window. And that, yes, they find uh, the Greek mythology book with um, King Midas' story in it. And, yeah, as, as it said, yeah, to cancel the wish, King Midas had to re go and retouch all the things he turned to gold and then had to bathe in a river before noon the next day. So um, what happens is then Billy realises that's what he's got to do. He's got to go and find everything he touched and then go and find, bathe in a river before noon tomorrow, noon on the Sunday. And of course that's a major issue, because they sold everything, they sold practically everything to those, to, you know, to the bad guys, to the to the pawn dealers, uh, the pawn break, brokers rather, they, yeah, they sold everything, and um, what's happened, yes, and then we cut to what the villains have been up to, that Cora and Willie, they've stayed outside Billy's house, and they're trying to find a way in, since they yes they they suspect that it's him that's got the gold. And there's an open window going up to his uh, grandmother's bedroom, which Willie clumsily climbs. And um, while Dora, while Cora manages to sneak in, she finds a way through a back door that she clearly didn't tell Willie about. And um, this is quite a funny scene when they get to the top of when Willie gets to the top of the window. Cora's in the bedroom, and uh, she tries to help pull Willie in, but then, then the, of course, because Willie's clumsy, uh, he makes the, the ladder, he, 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 he unbalances the ladder, and he falls backwards, and that's actually really funny. And, um, yeah, so then uh, they both get into the bedroom, and they, of course, what they find is the statue of Billy's mother, and, uh, yep, yeah, they uh, attempt to steal it, and they basically, they steal it. And while, um, Willie, Hannah, and uh, Billy, Hannah, and Leon uh, go to this hamburger restaurant to get something to eat. Uh, Billy accidentally turns the burger into gold when he touches it, and because it's in the process of turning to gold when he's biting into it, 
his teeth also turn to gold. And I thought, oh, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Um, while they're in the hamburger restaurant, they see uh, Willie and Cora's cargo pass with the statue sticking out of the boot or the trunk, if you're from the States. Yeah, the trunk of the car, and then there is, oh no, they're nicking his granny. So then what happens is uh, they decide what they go thinking about what to do, how to, because now they have to get um, Billy's grandmother back, but they, and then they also have to find a way to help Billy break the spell. So they have to make sure they can get uh, everything back that they sold to the baddies, and also then find time for him to go and bathe in a river so he'll cancel the spell before 12 the next day. So then what, so what happened, so yeah, so they basically go back to the pawn shop to, uh, where, where the, uh, bad guys have taken the statue, and what the, uh, Cora and Willie intend to do is to melt the statue down with all the other gold stuff they brought, and, uh, turn it into gold bars and sell it, of course, to make more money for themselves. So what they do is they, they, uh, Cora, uh, no, the kids sneak up to the basement where they're going to melt where where um, they're going to melt the statue down, and um, and then what happens is they they try to ambush them just before they turn on the um, just before they turn on the um, the melting device to uh, basically melt Billy's statue, Billy's grandmother along with all the other stuff. And they try, and Billy tries to explain that that's actually his grandmother. Of course, they don't buy it. I mean, who would? Um, so then, what happens is, um, so then what happens is actually Willie ties up the three kids, and um, what then to get loose, um, Leon gives Willie Billy his fake ID card, which he turns to gold, and then can use it to cut the rope, and then while, while the bad guys are distracted, trying to, you know, melting down the gold, uh, they knock the, uh, the kids knock them out with bowling balls, and, uh, but it turns out they're too late to stop the, the gold melting, so yes, uh, Billy's grandmother is now liquid gold, so what they do is they put, they pour the liquid gold into two buckets and sneak out while the, the baddies are unconscious and they and they go in and they try and they take a ride in uh, Willie's old junker car um, back, back to Billy's house and uh, they, and while they're on the way uh, they stop at the tree house to get some items Leon's tree house to get some items that uh, Billy had also turned to gold uh, that's when Billy looks in the car mirror and notices yet yeah, his actual his eye colour is turning gold. So something is starting to happen to him. Um, and then when they go back to Billy's house, they pour the solid gold into the bathtub. It nearly goes down the drain because they forgot to put the plug in, but they, rec they they notice it just in time. Billy puts the plug in, and it's and the special effects. I'm sure it's some CGI, sort of early CGI of the scene of the the gold being poured and. You know, and filling up the bathtub. It was quite impressive. Then what? Then um, yeah, of course, when the when Cora and Willie wake up, they, they've uh, noticed the car's gone, and they've they've gone back to Billy's house. They suspect that's where they've gone back to. And you can hear them breaking down doors in downstairs to get up to the bathroom. And yes, yeah, so they get into the bathroom and they ambush the kids. And when they get them cornered, uh, they finally make the kids explain how they got all this gold and um, yes Billy says to Cora that he has the power to touch to touch things and turn them to gold and she doesn't believe him and she threatens that and she threatens to pour the liquid gold down the drain if he doesn't tell her the truth so Billy then says if she if you don't believe me touch my finger so she touches his finger and of course then she turns to gold and Willie faints and um, and then uh, finally, Billy touches the touches the liquid gold, and at first it doesn't turn back. But that's because he'd forgotten a few of the very first things he turned to gold, like the hamster and his baseball cap. So he goes and gets them, puts them in the bathtub with the liquid gold, and then touches the gold. And then yes, uh, finally, uh, Billy's grandmother's brought back to life, and everything is restored to its uh, former to its former self. So. Then, of course, yes, with Billy's 
yeah, Billy's grandmother's now back to life and she's well. And then, yeah, the, then the police or the cops come and arrest Cora and Willie. And then they remember the second part of the task that Billy has to do, which is to go and find a river to bathe in to cancel the spell before noon on Sunday. So over the over the over in the middle over the course of the night, uh, they discover that the only river is an old sewage canal, which can be very dangerous to swim in. And um, it's, it was a river that was taken over by the sanit sanitation department, but that's the only place he could go. So they go to the, yeah they go to the sanitation river, the sewage canal, and uh, they sneak in. Of course, the people in charge of the of the works notice that there's three kids messing around, so they call the police to chase them. And coincidentally, the police that get the calls are the police that have arrested Cora and Willie. So while uh, the policeman stops for petrol or gas in America, uh, what they do is they, they trick a little girl into opening um, the door of the police car. And, um, and then what happens is uh, Willie then gets into the driver's seat. And this very funny scene happens. that They suddenly drive off while the uh, petrol is still being... Uh, while the petrol's still filling up the car, and they, they and and they, and it just drives off, and, and and the hose just pulls away when they drive off, and then there's petrol splashing everywhere. It's quite funny, and then um, so yeah, that because they've heard uh, the, the description of the three kids that have entered the uh, Wayland River sewage canal, and yes, and they realise that it's the same kids, uh, Billy, Hannah, and Leon. And um, what, and so yeah, they go to of course get their revenge. Um, and what Billy's actually noticed about himself while well, he's turning is he's actually turning into gold. The effect of him touching his teeth and turning him into gold gradually will turn his body to turn into gold. So while he, they're, they're trying to help him get to the sewage canal, they get they get inside the uh, the fence that keeps people out. They do manage to climb over it and get inside. And uh, what happens then is. Um, they get to the river where Billy can't stand anymore. He's stuck in a sitting position and he's turning into gold. When they actually put him down by the river, you hear this clunking sound. And um, then what happens is, um, just as they're about to push him in, just as Hannah and Leon are about to push him in the room, they're ambushed again by Cora and Willie. And um, whilst, um, whilst Leon and Hannah are struggling, uh, Billy manages to push himself forward and... Um, push himself forward and uh, fall headfirst into the river and then uh, I, th I think um, what happens is Cora and Willie sort of run run at each other to try and catch Hannah and Leon but they ha um, Leon and Hannah ditch them and the, the and, and they crash heads and they knock each other out and then there's this is, there's this quite this is very panicking scene where um, Hannah and Leon are wondering what's going to happen to Billy and the, you know they're screaming for him because he's Half golden, he's now in a you know in a very dangerous deep river, uh, but they, they see him moving and going over the waterfall, and then his head comes to the surface, and it turns out yes, he's he's back to his original self, and apparently now the spell is broken, so he's reversed the spell, and he's learned his lesson about th that that uh, that his wish was actually a curse, and um, then yes, um, Cora and Willie are arrested again. <laughs> And um, then, uh, and and then after being warned just not to play near the sewage canal again, the kids then decide that they'll all be friends. And no more picking on Leon won't pick on Billy anymore. They're they're going to officially be friends, and so they're becoming a duo, the trio, the three of them. And uh, then it cuts to the following Monday at school, where uh, they hand the assignments in of what they did over the weekend, and the teacher says, "Magic spells, golden grandmothers. What do you call this?" Uh, and Billy says, "It's my weekend." And Leon actually apologizes for sticking Billy up on the Friday about getting him to do his homework, because Leon had made it out like uh, Billy had cheated off him to cover his track, but then he gets up and apologizes, so it proves apologizes and tells the truth. So that proves yes, Leon's a reform character, and uh, and then when Le Billy leaves school on the day, he notices something he always wanted, which was a new bike. So it turns out yeah, it, it, it's clearly his old bike, but it's been turned into a nice, you know, brand new one with a letter for it, with a letter on it to say, 
with his name on it and he opens it to find that there's a check for $25,000 and he recognises the name Madame Latimer, which is the witch lady and she says that she told him to take the bitter with the sweet, he had the bitter and now he's the sweet, so she's given him a new bike and she's given him the money to pay for the necessary surgery for his grandmother to have a heart transplant and then it cuts to after her gra after the transplant, and yes, his grandmother's fit and healthy. She's like twenty. She feels twenty years long younger. She can return to work at the at the at the um, shop that the family used to run. She can return to work, and she beats Billy in a race. He's riding on his bike, and she's running. And then it ends with Billy going on his paper round, and uh, when he throws a paper into at someone's door, an old gentleman comes out and says, "Nice touch, kid." And then the la and then the final scene is him just looking, you know, looking with thanks at the witch lady's house. And then that's the end. So yes, well that's basically the story, the plot of the film. And as I say, for me it's a very nostalgic film from childhood, and I completely come across it by chance. We just ha we just happened to be taping what was on, I think, one Boxing Day morning, and this happened to be on. And I enjoyed it so much, I watched it several times. Um, and yeah, so about. I'm trying to think, seven, nearly to eight years ago, I ordered the DVD. And uh, as I have this multi regional DVD, if I remember, yes, I actually ordered it off Amazon. Uh, I will put a link to the trailer, is actually now available on YouTube. So I'll put a link in the description of the video to the trailer if you're interested in seeing it. It's not a very well known film, and I'll let you know it doesn't have any recognisable actors in it. I think that is, though, it's kind of the charm of it. Very low key actors, very talented actors, but very low key ones. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's part of the series. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. There's some some pictures on the back there, some clips from the film. It is a really you know decent. It could be a really good family film. For me, it's just nostalgic. Okay, so that was my uh, review of the Midas Touch. I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you're all awesome. See you soon. Bye.